Well, welcome to week one of what is a 12-week uh, conversation or journey, if you will, that we are starting as an entire church uh, centered around asking the question and uh, discovering what does it mean to follow Jesus. If we're called to be disciples, followers of Jesus, what does that mean and what does that look like? And uh, we are so excited uh, to start this 12-week journey uh, using for the entire conversation that we're in this resource called Following Jesus. Uh, Following Jesus, a disciple's handbook. It is a resource that we are encouraging every single person in our church uh, to get a copy of this, uh, to use it throughout these next 12 weeks as not just a devotional, uh, casual read, but as a study guide and a workbook to follow along with us to grow in relationship with God, to discover what it means to follow Jesus. You know, Jesus, he didn't come uh, to make fans. He didn't come to collect groupies and and fans that would ooh and ah at his miracles and repost him on Instagram. No, Jesus, he came because he so loved the world that he uh, gave his life that through him we might be reconciled unto God and we might have life eternal. But he didn't just come to save us from our sins and he didn't just come to Uh, give us life eternal. He came to give us life and life to the full in every area of our life. The Bible says in John 10, 10, uh, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has come that we may through him have life and life to the full. Jesus came as our example. He is, we'll talk about this momentarily, but he is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus came to give us an example that we would follow him. Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 19 through 20, Jesus says, Go therefore and make, not fans, but make disciples. A a disciple is a student, a follower, a student of a teacher that follows in his ways and his teachings. He says, "Go, Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them or instructing them, commanding them to observe or follow or obey all of my commands, the the life that Jesus came to provide for us. Yes, it is one of faith, but it is fully experienced as we learn to walk in his ways, in his word, in his will, as we become followers of Jesus. And we are starting uh, this journey week number one at the very beginning, and that is talking about what it means to repent and believe. I know those are kind of like, you know, maybe big Bible words, but we're going to kind of get into it. We're going to talk about repentance and believing, following Jesus in repenting and believing. I want to start uh, today by by reading a scripture, a couple scriptures, Mark chapter 1, starting in verse 14, verses 14 through 15, uh, the words of Jesus. Jesus says this, now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, these are the words of Jesus, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Listen, he says, therefore repent and believe in the gospel. The the first takeaway that we can, can conclude or that we can draw from this is that the starting point is repenting and believing. Jesus says, repent and believe. I don't know if you've ever been in a disagreement with someone before, um, something that it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's really more your preference versus their preference. Um, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I, we got into um, not really an argument, but a discussion that turned into more of a heated discussion about the correct way to stack our dishwasher. Now, if you're a part of our church, uh, you may have engaged in this conversation because my wife took our conversation to a social media platform that will not be named to see what uh, the rest of our social media friends, community, people that follow us or we follow, uh, said about this topic. And it was amazing, the, the conversation that went back and forth, everyone's different preferences on how to stack the dishwasher. That's preference. I, I think this is the right way. I think this is the right way. But, but at the end of the day, there's not really a right way. There's not really a truth. It's, it, it, it's your preference. 
It's funny how we can kind of take a similar thought to following Jesus. And, and we, we approach following Jesus, a relationship with Jesus, like, yeah, 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 Jesus has his preferences, things that he, he values and things that he likes and things that he think are, thinks are important. And I have my preferences. And, and we got this good relationship going because, you know, he died on the cross and he's forgiven me of all of my sins. And it's amazing because there's grace and there's mercy and forgivenesses. And so we kind of just, you know, we coexist with our preferences. That is not following Jesus. That is not the, the gospel or the message that Jesus came and preached. No, Jesus said the starting place, starting place for relationship with him, how we enter into the kingdom of God, it is by fully repenting and believing. What, what does that word repentance mean? That word repentance, what it means is it's, it's the Greek word, which means to change your mind, to completely turn to change your thoughts, your behaviors, and your actions. Repentance, it involves your mind, your will, your emotions, and actions. Repentance is a complete change of how you think and how you live and what you hold to be true. Belief, that word belief, what it means is to completely rely on something or someone with absolute confidence. And the reality is that repentance, it starts with, with belief. We, we made reference to, to this a moment ago, but our, our belief is that Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. There, there, there is no other besides from him. Jesus, he is the only way to relationship with creator God. He is the only way to forgiveness of sins. He is the only way to life eternal in, in a place called heaven, paradise, if you will, with God. He's the only way. And Jesus, he's the only truth. There's only, there's only one truth, and that is the truth that Jesus has set and declared as the truth. He's the only life. All of us, in a sense, we are searching for joy and fulfillment and satisfaction. And Jesus, he is the only way to life to the full. And repentance, it starts with belief. It, it starts with the Holy Spirit on the inside, convincing and convicting our hearts of the reality of who Jesus is and us saying, I fully put my confidence and I fully put my trust. I fully put all of my weight into who Jesus says that he is, into what Jesus has said is truth and into the life or the way in which Jesus has set forth for me to follow. And that that belief, what it does is it causes us to, to repent. It causes us to, in every area of our life, say, you know, my, my, my thoughts and my preferences and my opinions and what culture says and what I was raised to think and raised to believe, it, it, it says this over here. But, but I have a belief and a conviction in the reality of Jesus now. And these two, they don't, they don't coexist this is not my preference and his preference and we're just living together. No, 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 no. Because I believe in Jesus and I'm convinced of his reality. I'm fully turning from my ways to him and to his ways. Here's the second conclusion or thought that I'd like to bring to our attention. And that is this, that repentance, it is not a one-time thing, but it is an ongoing process. We won't read these verses, but two scriptures that I can think of that I'll make reference to is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh, Paul in Romans chapter 12, Paul, Paul writes this, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but rather be renewed. Be in a continual process of through the renewing of your mind, be, be changed and be transformed. Uh, the Bible says, uh, the words of Jesus, John 16, 12, I, I believe it is, Jesus says, there's many things, many things that, that I want to tell you and I want to show you, but, but you're not ready for them right at this moment. And so the Holy Spirit, he will reveal them to you and teach them to you in due time. I heard a pastor ask this question recently. He said, when's the last time you've changed your mind? When's the last time you, you said, you know what? 
I was so wrong about this. I, 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 don't, I don't think this way anymore. I don't talk this way anymore. I don't, I don't look at this anymore. I don't participate. I was so wrong. The Holy Spirit is showing me. He's convincing me. He's changing and transforming. And I, I repent. I, I turn from that way of thinking. And I'm going to fully follow Jesus. Repentance is not a one-time action, but in the life of a follower, a believer, a disciple of Jesus, it is an ongoing, continual process that we continually are submitting our life to the ways and the will of God through the power and presence of his Holy Spirit, saying every day, Jesus, teach me, teach me. Open my eyes to see things that I haven't seen. O open my ears to, to, to hear, hear your voice clearly and freshly. Change and transform and renew me. And it is our commitment to an ongoing repenting and believing cycle or process. Continually saying, Jesus, I, I, I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. And if there's any part of my life that doesn't align with your ways, your will, your word, ongoingly, I, I will repent and turn from that way of thinking and living, fully turn to you. I want to read you two, two quotes from this book, this resource that we're using, a uh, resource by uh, Pastor Dale and Pastor Joel Everest, um, two great pastors of a church in Nashville called New Song Nashville. And in, in, in this book, they, 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 they write many things, obviously, but two quotes I want to read to you. The first one is this, Jesus called to repent and believe was unmistakable, unapologetic. He made it clear that it was absolutely necessary in order to pass from death into life and from darkness into light. Repenting and believing is absolutely necessary to be saved and to enter into God's kingdom. Second quote that I want to read you is, is this. They write, if repenting is turning away from anything that does not line up with God's word, God's will, and God's ways, it means that we must be open to an ongoing change of heart and mind that results in an ongoing change in beliefs and behaviors and attitudes and actions. It is impossible to be saved without turning from our own ways and turning to him, repenting, and believing in the finished work of Jesus. And this process is an ongoing process. I remember growing up, um, I, I am, as some of you may know, I'm a pastor's kid. And um, be, be, not because I'm a pastor's kid, but maybe because I'm a pastor's kid, um, the, the, the rules and the guidelines in my house were different than most of the rules and guidelines in my friends' homes. Um, I say probably not because I'm a pastor's kid. I think it's probably just being a follower of Jesus. Um, but I can remember di different instances where I'd have friends over to my house. And um, I, I can't think of a particular example, but my dad would come in and he would correct us or he would say, hey, we're not going to do that or we're not going to watch that or we're not going to say that. And I remember there was a part of me that was a little bit embarrassed because, dad, these are my friends and like, just like you're, you're kind of cramping on our style, so to speak. And, and, and he would exit the room and I'd play the middleman. Ah, yeah, this is my dad. You know, what he means is what, what he was trying to say, what really what he was saying, we, we kind of do that with Jesus sometimes, don't we? We act like Jesus needs a middleman, like Jesus needs help with his message. He, he needs help and someone to do some PR for him. And so instead of just preaching a simple message of repentance and belief, what, what Jesus has said and what Jesus requires is that you fully acknowledge that he is God and you are not. And he, he requires and he asks that, that we fully turn away from our own ways. And because we believe in his reality, fully turn to him. And in repenting and believing, the grace of God and the door of salvation is open. Instead of preaching that, we, we kind of go, well, you know what Jesus means is... Well, I mean, I know what the Bible says, but what it's actually trying to tell us is, and, and we, we compromise. I, I would just say in conclusion to this week one message and what it means to follow Jesus is that we remember that 
yes, number one, repenting and believing is the, the, the doorway. It's necessary for salvation, that it's an ongoing process. But lastly, that we've been called and commissioned by Jesus to preach this message, to preach this message to the world, that if the world would simply turn from its own ways to Jesus, that salvation and grace and forgiveness and an abundance of life would be freely and fully given, that we, we would start preaching this, this message maybe even to each other. And, and instead of allowing one another to compromise and to think that we would say, hey, let's, let, let's be reminded, let's remember that we, we don't think like that anymore. We don't live like that anymore. We've, we've turned from our ways to fully follow him. My prayer is that as we start this journey, uh, this, this collection of talks, that more and more an ongoing process that, that the Holy Spirit would help us to fully turn from our ways, fully put our trust in Him, and in doing so, we would see the life of Jesus more fully established, His kingdom come, His will be done, maybe more than we ever have in our entire life.